Hello, I would like to show you how to do test-driven development in R with RStudio. And so here you see the test-driven development cycle. So I will need to write my test first that fails, then write code to make it pass, then refactor. I won't do this much in this example, like cleanup code. It will be very redundant here. And then I have to, 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 to complete the cycle multiple times. All right. So I'll be doing that multiple times. Uh, so you get an idea about how it works. And so I go back, this, I go to our studio and I'm going to create a package because that's the recommended unit to work with. And I do this a bit faster because how to write an R package, I have different videos about that. So I call the package TDD or in the great tradition of R to add this R in the end. And I'm not gonna uh, worry about what's there, you'll see I'll modify it a bit, but I won't discuss what this skeleton code is. The first thing I'll be doing is I'm going to the red phase. I'm going to write a test that fails. Well, let's do that. Uh, well, first we have to write that test. So, um, Dev tools, use test, and I'm going to work on a function called is prime that determines if a number is prime unexpectedly. Uh, so I'm going to give it a better description, and I expect that. Two is a prime number. Is prime two should be prime number. So if I now go to build and I click on test package, like from now on I'll use just use a keyboard shortcut, so I won't show you every time that you should use Ctrl Shift T. I break the code, and what's the problem? Well, R is very clear. It could not find the function is prime correct because I have not written it yet. So it is time to write that function now. So I broke the code and I have to use minimal effort to fix it. So there's some um, there's a file called here hello. I'm just going to rename it to is prime. And then the code that's there, I'm going to ruthlessly remove it. And I'm going to write the minimal code that should fix this. This for example. And if I now test it with Ctrl Shift T. It still breaks, it doesn't use the argument, or I, well, let's put in an X there. Uh, great, done. All right, so I, I just wrote the test, which failed, I made it pass, and it's passed, that's great. So I could improve the code now, which is you know, close to impossible at this moment, because it's so small and trivial. So time to write a test that fails again. So um, writing a test that fails will be for the first non-prime number which will be 4. So I, uh, write, I, I at this test, yes, this test indeed fails because is prime isn't or 4 isn't false, which is correct. So we're going to add our first, now we have to think a bit, but not very deep. I will try to be like close to, um, I, do, I, will, won't, I won't try hard to be very smart here, I'll just uh, try to be fast and make uh, allowing myself to make a lot of stupid mistakes so you can see how the cycle goes. Right, so for i, is uh, I go from series, it goes from 2 to um, I think x minus 1 because we want to exclude x itself and if x modulo i equals 0, so if you, there's a, a proper div division there then it's not a prime and if you can divide by 2, 3, 4, or 5 then it's not a prime and else return to true. So in the end you don't need to add this return around it, you just write true. And let's see if our tests uh, fail. Ooh, let's see, Ooh, I broke my earlier code because is prime 2 isn't true. We know 2 is a prime, but well, it will start if x equals 2, it will divide it by 2. We'll find out it's not a prime. So we have to add if x equals 2, return true. Uh, I'm not saying that this that, that this function is as efficient as possible. That's not the idea of this exercise. I'll show you how to think. All right. So again, I fixed my code. So I fixed my code again. I made my code pass. I could refactor here. So um, I, I have no idea what can be done even more cleanly. So I'm going to write the next test that fails. Well, so let's say we're going to. I have, so I expect that. 1 is, is not a prime, by definition 1 is not a prime, so let's see if this breaks. No, this is alright, so we must remove this test, because it doesn't break the code. 
Now I expect also that zero is not a prime. Let's see what happens. All right, that works. Minus one is not a prime. Like negative numbers are never prime. So our minus four is also not a prime. So this always works. So apparently I can never break the code anymore. So that means I'm done, except for some error message. And I like to use that, th th those kind of tests, I call them abuse. So for example, I can call my function with a, with a word called hello. And if I use hello, uh, then it should give me an, an error. Uh, so I test that, expect I expect an error if I use is prime on the word hello and the error message I expect is x must be a number. Right, I expect that to happen and not as so at the moment it gives the actual message non numeric argument to binary operator. That's not very helpful for our user. No, we expect if we put in a, a word that it says x should be a number. So I now broke my code again and I'm going to copy paste this error message because I'll have to add it to is prime. If not is numeric x then stop with that message. Oppa. So now I've again fixed the, the code. So um, so I've now done already, I think, four cycles in test-driven development. So you've seen that I didn't write too much tests. So I can't, apparently my algorithm always works up until now, um, which also kind of surprises me, but if it's, well, that's, that's what can happen. So I hope you and that it makes you clear how to uh, develop in a test-driven development way. Uh, you see that my algorithm is not very brilliant. It's not documented yet, uh, but it, I can't break it, so by definition it's it's okay. Uh, th there are some things that can be improved, for example, it, you don't need to test up until x minus 1, but if you improve your code to make it faster, then you should also write first a test that proves it's faster. And then, yeah, of course, this should always remain being true. This, these tests should always keep working, you should not break your own test. Alright, so I hope this was helpful and uh, have a nice day.